Hey Film Boss, welcome back to Film Feature 43. Today we're doing another 43 Facts video about a movie that I'm pretty sure everyone has seen. Literally everyone I know has seen this movie and can quote it at least a little bit. Even kids whenever I was in high school that weren't allowed watching TV or movies snuck off somewhere to watch Forrest Gump. So I don't think this movie needs much of an introduction, so let's get into it. As you may know, Forrest Gump, the movie, was based on a book called, well... Forrest Gump, and that book was supposedly based on an idiot savant that the author's father knew. Warner Brothers bought the rights to Forrest Gump, and they needed a competent screenwriter to morph the book into a movie, and a competent actor to bring that screenplay to life. Luckily for them, screenwriter Eric Roth and actor Tom Hanks were both working on The Postmaster, and they were both kicked off The Postmaster when Kevin Costner came aboard that film, so they kind of drifted over to Forrest Gump. Tom Hanks decided to take the role after about an hour and a half of reading the script, as long as the movie would be historically accurate, whatever that means. Production was completely halted with the release of Rain Man because Warner Brothers felt that the idiot savant movie niche was filled by Rain Man and they didn't want to put out another movie very similar, so Paramount Pictures swooped in swap the rights for executive decision with Warner Brothers for the rights of Forrest Gump and decided to make the film. Gump had a new home at Paramount, but Paramount decided to drastically cut the budget because they didn't think it was going to do that good. So Robert Zemeckis and Tom Hanks decided to not take any pay up front in exchange for a cut of the end profit, netting Tom Hanks, depending on who you read, anywhere from 40 to 60 million dollars by the time it was all said and done. With cuts in the budget came some cuts from the original book, like the fact that Forrest Gump was supposed to originally weigh 350 pounds and be a professional wrestler and hang out with an orangutan and eventually go to the moon, all of which were way too expensive for the filmmakers to justify putting into the movie, so they were all cut. They weren't the only scenes that were cut, though. There was a scene where Forrest Gump saves Martin Luther King Jr. and his followers from a bunch of police dogs by playing fetch with the police dogs, and also a scene where Jenny releases the brake of a tractor, rolling it over top of her father, both of which were shot and released as deleted scenes, but... I think for the better, didn't make it into the movie. There was another scene of George Bush Sr. and Forrest Gump playing ping pong that was actually taken from archival footage of George Bush Sr. actually playing ping pong while he's president and getting hit in the crotch with the ping pong ball. But due to technical limitations at the time, they couldn't get the CGI to match up with where Tom should be hitting the ball, so that scene was cut as well. It wasn't the only presidential archival footage used. The Medal of Honor ceremony for Forrest was actually a real Medal of Honor ceremony for Sammy L. Davis. Also inspired by real life events was the running from coast to coast that Forrest does in the movie. It was inspired by the real life event of Louis Michael Vigera, who ran from New Jersey to San Francisco for charity, that charity being the American Cancer Society. That day, for no particular reason, I decided to go for a little run. Speaking of charity, because of Lieutenant Dan, the Gary Sinise Foundation makes about $30 million a year to help support veterans, which is good because Gary Sinise almost didn't take the role of Lieutenant Dan. It was asked of Kevin Bacon to fill that role, and they also thought of giving it to Joe Pesci at one time, which I think would have made the movie completely different. But realistically, I don't think anyone could fill the blue wrapped legs of Lieutenant Dan like Gary could. And I say blue wrapped legs because that's how they got the effect of Lieutenant Dan having amputated legs. They put a blue fabric around Gary Sinise's legs and cut it out in post-production. And speaking of cutting out, they also cut out a hole in the side of the boat so Gary didn't have to lift his legs over the side and break the illusion. He just swung himself off the boat and jumped into the water. Gary's passion for Lieutenant Dan actually comes because most of his family are veterans, and the rosary that Lieutenant Dan wears during the movie is actually Sinise's brother-in-law, who was a Vietnam veteran. And as for respect for authenticity and realism, the scenes that take place in Alabama and Vietnam are all shot in Buford, South Carolina, right across the street from each other, 
And even though the jungles were fake in Vietnam, the explosion where Forrest is running out of the jungle is actually real. And it was missed by the director. They started shooting while Zemeckis was in the bathroom. And by the time he came out, the explosion already happened. He never saw it until it was already on film, and they could only do it one time, so that's the take that they rolled with. The movie also scores realism points with actual Vietnam veterans, because you never see the Viet Cong anywhere in the movie. They say it is the most realistic Vietnam movie that a lot of them have ever seen. Adding to the realism, Tom Hanks actually carried McKelty Williamson away from that very real fireball as it was happening in real time. They hooked Williamson up to a rig to help Hanks carry him and they ran out of the jungle as it was exploding. Williamson later claimed that he got turned down for a lot of movies because his lips aren't as big as Bubba's are in the movie. What's wrong with your lip? I was born with big guns, sir. Which is a weird thing for a casting agent to be looking for, but that's what he said. Tupac Shakur audition for the role Bubba, and Ice Cube and Dave Chappelle were actually given the chance to be Bubba, but they turned it down. Dave Chappelle later kicking himself, saying that it was a huge missed opportunity. That's all I have to say about that. He did work with Williamson in Con Air later on, and he would not pass up the opportunity to work with Tom Hanks again whenever he was cast in the 1998 movie You've Got Mail. Williamson wasn't the only one to snag a coveted role, Jodie Foster, Nicole Kidman, and Demi Moore were all offered the role of Jenny! Jenny wasn't the only female role in Forest Life that had to be filled. They decided to cast Sally Fields as Mama Gump, even though she's only 10 years older than Tom Hanks, and just played his love interest six years earlier in Punchline, but that's show business. Fields also played a male reporter in the Running Across America scene, which I find pretty funny, but that wasn't the only trickery in that scene. They actually switched out Tom for his brother Jim because they were on a strict shooting schedule and they needed to shoot at two places at once and nobody could get down the forest run except for Tom's brother who later said that it's a stupid Hanks thing. Another piece of casting trivia is that Haley Joel Osment was actually chosen to play Forrest Gump Jr. when he was seen by the casting director in a Pizza Hut commercial. Big would be an understatement. Haley Joel Osment was the only young male child actor on set because Michael Connor Humphreys, who played young Forrest, actually wasn't an actor at all. It was something that his mother just pushed him to do for fun, and he was chosen for his speech mannerisms. Are you stupid or something? My mama says stupid is as stupid does. That was actually copied by Hanks later on to get the actual way that Forrest talks. I ate some. Mama sent me ten dollars and I'd like to spend it all on you. That wasn't the only voice acting piece of trivia that I found out about Forrest Gump. The voice of Elvis. I told you not to bother this nice young man. Oh, no, that's all right, man. I, I was just showing him a thing or two on the guitar here. This was actually played by an uncredited Kurt Russell, which that fact actually led me into this rabbit hole that has nothing to do with Forrest Gump about Kurt Russell's ties to Elvis. Like the fact that Kurt Russell's first movie was an Elvis Presley movie called It Happened at the World's Fair, where he was a little kid who kicked Elvis in the shin. Mister, are you drunk? No, no, no kidding. I'll tell you what. If you kick me in the shin real hard, I'll give you a quarter. Okay, go ahead. Play it. Ah! And then Kurt Russell actually played Elvis in a biopic directed by John Carpenter in 1979. So there's some kind of weird tie there that I thought was kind of interesting. Anyway, back to Forrest Gump. Did you know that Forrest actually had his own flu game? Tom Hanks, during the shooting of all the college football scenes, was very sick, but in order to keep shooting on schedule, he shot the scenes anyway. In other football news, if you look closely, Forrest's uniform is the only one to not have a speck of dirt on it. That's because he's too fast and none of the other players can catch him to tackle him. Another sports-related detail is during the ping pong scenes, you never see Forrest blink. And why is that? It's because he was told never, ever take your eye off the ball. Right. So, he doesn't. And much like Lieutenant Dan's legs, there's a lot of CGI trickery that takes place in this movie, like around the reflecting pool, where it looks like there's thousands of people there. 
There were actually about only 1,500 extras that were shot in the front, and then they were copied and pasted and put throughout the reflecting pool. Speaking of that scene, the speech that Forrest gives that you can't understand, what he's really saying is, There's only one thing I could say about the war in Vietnam. Sometimes when people go to Vietnam, they come home to their mamas without any legs, and sometimes they don't come home at all. And that's a bad thing. That's all I have to say about that. That was a terrible impression. But anyway, speaking of speeches you can't understand, when the drill sergeant is yelling at Forrest and the other recruits, what he's actually saying is, Listen up, people! This is a very intelligent individual. Lock your scuzzy bodies behind this private and do exactly as he does, and you will go far in this man's army. Is that clear? Yes, drill sergeant! That isn't the only thing we learned from Forrest Training Days. We actually learned his full name at one time. On the side of his helmet, it says F-N-M-I-G, which stands for Forrest, no middle initial gump. So... He is just Forrest. Forrest Gump. The film made $678.2 million and at the time was the third highest grossing film of all time. It was also Robert Zemeckis' highest grossing movie and won six Academy Awards, including Best Picture. Not everyone thinks it's the best thing since sliced bread, though. The Hollywood Reporter polled the Academy of members that were around in 1994, and most of them said that if they had the chance to go back, they would change their vote from Forrest Gump to Shawshank Redemption. Premiere Magazine also rated it top 10 most overrated films of all time, which I think is a little ridiculous, but... That's their opinion. Forrest Gump himself really didn't like the adaptation of his life into film. In the sequel book Gump & Co, he says about how Hollywood messed it up and it was super not accurate. He also meets Tom Hanks in the book, which would be kind of trippy. And they were going to make a sequel to Forrest Gump based on that book, but it was shut down due to 9-11 and all the stuff that was going on in the early 2000s. So they just decided that it wasn't worth making a sequel in such a tumultuous time. So that's my 43 facts that I found about Forrest Gump. Let me know what you think. Is there a movie that you want me to do 43 facts on? I'd be interested to see what you guys' thoughts are down below. As always, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.